Okay, what I thought I'd do next before I go on to Falcon is to uh, go back through the list of packages that I've installed and just try and scoop up any that need to be rebuilt, which could be rebuilt at the moment. For example, OpenSSH is one of them. So I'm going to leave the Falcon tab open and look for OpenSSH. Let's see what other dependencies it's got. There aren't any others. Um, Oh, net tools assist that. Let's have a quick look at those. So that's easy enough to install. And that looks like that's easy enough. So we could install that. I just had an idea that it might be good to tick some of these off the list. Um, so there's less work to do later on. So I'll mark this as going to be done. And uh, oh, actually, we've got to rebuild the other ones first. So we're going to look at net tools and sysstat. We've obviously got the XOR build environment. Um, you might see some of the links going a bit funny where some where we have been have gone back to the colour to say that they've not been visited. I think there's probably limited history that's being used up. Um, and you might see other packages where I've clicked on them either to view them um, or I've been sort of doing some tests and things um, myself in between videos just to make sure what's coming up is going to work okay. So <clears throat> don't concern yourself too much about what colour the links are. So let's do sysstat first. <clears throat> Okay, I think I'll just um, accept the defaults that are there. <clears throat> so I can figure and build and as the root user install it. Configuration So cron to begin gathering sysstat history information you must add to or create a privileged users cron tab. The history data location is via log SA. The user running sysstat utilities via cron must have the right access to this location. Below is an example of what to install in the cron tab just prior to suit your needs. So it just says a privileged user. But it doesn't necessarily say root. Um, this does location. The user might running system utilities via Chrome must have right access to this location. So let's have a look at that. 
so it is actually owned by Root. So I would say it's probably nothing wrong in um, sudo I sudo adding this um, to the roots cron tab. Um, no, sorry, not that one. Uh, we want to become the root and then do cron tab minus e. Is it called f cron tab? Is it? Yep. Uh, do an insert then. And so if we copy and paste this, it will run these activities at the time specified in the comments and in the configuration. Um, so it runs that command with those parameters at those specific times. Modifications taken into account right now. So that's that. Um, a system startup a Linux restart message must be inserted in the daily data file to reinitialize the kernel counters. This can be automated by installing the sysstat script from BLFS boot scripts. So let's do that. Okay, so I'll come back out of that. Um, well, I tied it up, sister, didn't I? Yeah. Uh, so what I might do now is reboot the machine to take account of those changes. And I'll just monitor the actual screen itself, actual terminal. So it's just rebooted now. Got the logo, grub menu, and I've got the boot messages. And well, it doesn't look like it's put up any messages saying that anything's been started, but I imagine it has done what it says it would do, which is just to reset some counters. This is not actually running a daemon, it's just resetting something at each boot, boot time. <clears throat> so I don't know if there'll be anything in the D message. No, there isn't, certainly not at the end. Um, so we'll just have to assume that is doing what it says it's doing. So that's sysstat. Let's now do net tools. Right, so it's the instructions below to automate the configuration process by piping yes to the make command if you wish to run the interactive configuration progress, process by changing the instruction to just make, but you're not sure how to answer all the questions, just accept the defaults, be fine in the majority of cases. What you're asked here is a bunch of questions about which network protocols you've enabled in the kernel. The default answers will enable the tools from this package to work with most common protocols, TCP, PPP, and several others. You, actually, you still actually need to enable these in the kernel. What you merely, what you do here is merely tell the package you include support for those protocols in its programs, but it's up to the kernel to make the protocols available. So let's just copy and paste this. to build it and then as the root put these two commands in and that's done so 
So now we can go back to rebuild OpenSSH. So we've obviously obviously got the um, user and group installed. So let's copy the configure command to check there's no other options we need to add in. With pad we need to add in because we've got that. With XORTH, set the default location with the XORTH binary for XORTH authentication. So this can also be controlled from the SSHD config with the XAuth location keyword. You can omit this switch if XAuth is already installed. Okay. And libedit I think is external. Or it certainly used to be. Uh, let's put it in and see if it works. Um, I will put that XAuth in. Yeah, I it not found. I'm sure that used to be a library that was listed, but specified as an external to BLFS, and it doesn't seem to be there anymore. Oh, sorry, there it is. There it is. You can see it buried in there. So if you've installed that, you can add that option so let's rerun that okay so All those nodes, they can curve what we've got installed and what we've enabled to run. Let's just check the PAM support is enabled. Yes, it is. That's quite important. So that looks good. So let's build the package. And run some tests. So this takes a few minutes as I remember, so we'll just wait for them to finish.
Right, so that's finished testing. It says all units, all unit tests passed on all test pass. So that's good. So let's become the root and reinstall this. And we don't need to change, uh, well, actually, we better check the configuration because the configuration may have been overwritten. So I've still got that change that I've made there. So it's obvious that the configuration hasn't been overwritten. So that's good. So what I'm going to attempt to do is to restart the SSH server. There's a chance that the link will drop doing this. So it's running at the moment. Let's restart. And it looks like it's kept the link up. And you can see it's using a different process ID. So it has actually restarted successfully. So that's open SSH that's been reinstalled to take account of Xorg. Now, while that was testing, I was looking through, there's one or two others we can do. Um, let's have a look at GPM next. Um, oh, I'm not sure why I've got that to reinstall. No, I might have just blanket put that down thinking it needed to be reinstalled and it doesn't. So I'll remove that message saying that needs to be reinstalled. It clearly doesn't. Right, the next two are both the wet text web browsers, links and links. So let's get them both up. So it was probably lib event. Oh no, I see it's probably these here. So we can double check these are actually installed. If we don't believe our downloads history or list. Or indeed the links changing color, we can look for these programs or libraries. So if I type in the first one, for example, PNG fix, you can see it's come up. So we know that that package is installed. CJPEG, CJPEG, yep, that's there. RSVG convert, RSVG convert, that's there. Libtiff, we've got fax to PS. Yep, there it is. And finally, Brotley. It's got a program called Brotley. And yes, that's worked as well. So that confirms that the dependencies are indeed uh, installed. So let's extract links again. And there's no uh, options apart from adding enable graphics to enable support for graphics mode. So I imagine this would be, um, yeah, inside the graphical environment that this would work. Okay, so that's found the X drivers by the looks of it. It's using all these formats because some of those are dependencies that we've got installed. We've checked there's Brotley. So that looks all good. So now let's build it. And it looks like that's finished. So now let's 
install the package with these commands. And that's done. So that's links, I'll mark that as built. And we'll look at links now. And that wants, well, GNU TLS is optional and it's experimental as well to replace OpenSSL. So we're not particularly bothered about that. And we can see we've got these uh, installed as well. So let's extract links. It's that one there. Put the patch in. Put the configuration command in. Let's check any extra options. So yeah, well that looks like a good one to include. We're not using GNU TLS. So that's probably it. And let's build it. Okay, that's installed. So And do that with these two commands and that's it um, let's check the configuration to see whether this this has changed so let's look for the word locale Locale char set true. Persistent cookies true. Default editor vi. So it looks like, oh, it says here, these following lines were saved from your previous configuration. So this file might not look exactly the same as it would have done on the first installation, but it has actually preserved them. So that's okay. So let's tidy up. So that's links. All right, I'll go back to the top to see what else can be reinstalled. All right, looks like open LDAP. I've got rebuild off GNU TLS and MariaDB. Let's take a look at that one. Yeah, there's just PostgreSQL, which, well, I don't know, is it worth bothering with that? It's got a few dependencies. Um, I'll probably skip this. I don't use it. Um, and to be quite honest, at the current state, it would probably install as it is and work fine. <clears throat> So, um, in fact, let's have a look at it again. Yeah, the only thing it would be waiting for is FOP because that's not installed, but everything else would go in. So, yeah, it wouldn't be a problem to install it. So, let's do LDAP. As it says, got GNU TLS and MariaDB installed. If you only need the, to install the client side LDAP libraries, corresponding to the man pages, libraries, and header files, right, so it's only these commands we need to run. Uh, 
Uh, I wouldn't have thought there'd be any other configuration to add in. No, it looks like they're all to do with the server. You can see there's a lot more options there. So we'll put that in. In fact, it could be that some of these options we're putting in are just purely for the server. So this may be um, a bit pointless what we're doing, reading, rebuilding this just for the libraries. Sudo minus e make install. Okay, that's done. I'm just um, updating the uh, list of packages that I've installed to say that it's been installed. So I shall run the command to actually install now. Oh, sorry, that's what I was just doing, wasn't it? Okay, well, I just rebuilt, re redone the install. Uh, so that's effectively done anyway. So the next one I can do is Cyrus Sazzle, because that says rebuild after MariaDB and Sphinx, and we've got both of those installed. So I'll mark that one as being rebuilt. Okay, let's tidy that up and look for open uh, no sorry sazzle there it is so you can see we've got everything installed that I'm going to install anyway mit kerber not going to bother with postgresql I'm not going to bother with so uh, let's just extract so configure. Let's see what else we can enable here. Right, straight away, although it's not mentioned. It says with Sphinx build equals no, so we've got that installed. We can, I presume, set that to yes. To Sazzle, enable auth Sazzle DB, the switch enables the Sazzle DB authentication back in. Uh, let's try and enable that. GWM to be used instead of Barclay. Well, they haven't set that as default, so I won't bother with that. We've got open LDAP. Enable the LDAP PB, LDAP DB backend. And then these two are unsupported, it says, so I won't bother enabling those. And we have to build on a single job. And we'll reinstall with these commands. So that's that. So 
So that's that one. I think it's just one or two more to do. Let's go down the list and have a look. There's still a few I'm missing. There's quite a few to rebuild after FOP, so it's probably for documentation. Uh, I've got rebuild, C make after optional builds, including QT, so I can't do that. LibIDN rebuild after Git, so we can do that one. Uh, LibIDN 2. Let's shut that down. LibIDN 2. Yeah, get to NGT. We've got all of that there, so that's fine. So I'll mark that as rebuilt. Right, so extract lib ID N two. Okay, GTK doc is just for the API documentation anyway, so I'll leave that off. So there's some status. I can't see anything specifically mentioned Git, so whether it uses it during the build or or what, I don't know. So let's build it anyway. And make check. So there's no tests run there. But there's three run there that pass, so that's okay. Oh, this looks like this might be test for the documentation. So that's why there's nothing run there. So there's nothing to wor worry about. Uh, so let's reinstall the package. And that's done. So let's go back, identify any others. MariaDB rebuild after Sphinx, which requires PY test. So that's another one that can be done. So I'll mark that as being rebuilt. So extract that, find the instructions. So yes, indeed, everything's got things highlighted there. So we don't need to add the user or group again for obvious reasons, they already exist. Let's create a build directory. Copy the CMake command to configure it. I doubt if there's much to change. Uh, embedded server on. Yep, that's on. Extra char sets equals complex, that's set, and skip test is on. So, tests for connected which should not support without additional setup, and without server on. Use this switch if you don't want the server and would like to build the client only. Um, Probably best, especially if you're going to use something like Amarok as it mentions here. Um, or unless it's a separate, if that's an embedded server rather than the normal server. But it doesn't look like that without server on is specified. So, yep, take that as it is.
Okay, that has configured. So you can see it's found some optional packages, which is good because these will be all dependencies. So these have been disabled. There's nothing there I recognize that should be installed. Uh, some optional packages. Okay, Java's one, which is something we'll be installing. Um, I wonder if that's worth... How long does this take to build? Let's see how long it takes to build. Uh, it's not too long. Yeah, I think now I'm here, I might as well install it, but I guess if you want, you could wait if you want to install it with Java support. Um, I will put a message to rebuild after Java. Uh, it's not actually mentioned in the book, but obviously it's um, something that's there. It could be that there's additional configuration in Java that's required to enable it to work with MariaDB, but it's maybe not mentioned in the book and that's why it's not mentioned uh, in MariaDB that Java is a requirement or, or an optional dependency. So we'll find that out when we come to rebuild it again. But yes, I will build this now. Uh, let's just see how long it does actually take. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to take too long.
Okay, so that's built. Let's run the tests. It says one test test connect is known to fail, which I think I remember from the first time we ran this. Okay, there's that test connect that failed. Um, I don't think I'll bother running this full test because it's going to be reinstalled and we've already run it once that indicated it was quite successful, as I remember. So that's not particularly important at the moment. And as I say, I probably would have waited for Java to be installed had it been in the instructions. So uh, let's do sudo minus E. Make install, move the PAM configuration file. Okay, looks like it hasn't been installed this time, so that's okay. Uh, let's just Double check this configuration because I did make a change to it. Uh, that file there, and yes, it's overwritten it. So no, sorry, no, it hasn't. It hasn't overwritten it because I put that remark in there. So that's all okay. Um, we've got a database installed, so we don't need to do anything else. Um, I'll run this data, MariaDB upgrade, even though the database hasn't really changed. Uh, but first, I need to restart the server. So, my SQL restart. And then I can do the Maria upgrade, DB upgrade, minus P to specify the root password type that in and it does say that it's already um, at the correct version so it hasn't done anything else but you can force it as you can see if you wish to still run it so that's all good for now so let's see if we can identify what other packages there are Swig, it says rebuild after many of the languages. So I would guess Java again would be one of them. But let's take a look. And then that was mentioned in the introduction. So yeah, there's quite a few there. So I think that's going to have to be one of the last to take account for all of that. I've got Mercurial to be rebuilt after GPGME. So let's have a look at that one. I'm not sure about GPGME. No, it hasn't been installed yet, so we'll skip that one. Glib. So that looks like it's got everything. It says sysprof and desktop utils. Or should that read desktop file utils because that hasn't been installed yet. 
desktop file details okay so I won't bother with that at the moment so a lot of these are either FOP or things like GTK or text live right Pango rebuild after sysprof I think we can do that one so let's go to Pango Double check sysprof. Oh, that needs to be reinstalled as it is. Oh no, that's not been installed yet. Okay. It's just had the link changed. So I've obviously opened it at some point. Opened the link, but not installed it. Uh, libtiff. Needs free glutton libweb p. Let's have a look at that one. Where's that going? So they look like they're probably installed, but again, I'll check these because I'm unsure. That's got a recommended that hasn't been installed. So I need to look for lib glut. No, it didn't look like it is. Um, nope. And I can do a search for certain uh, let's search the route will be easier. Okay, I just realise I'm not the route, so it's probably not the best way to run this. Yep, it's, it's not there, so I can't do libtiff again at the moment. libevdev rebuild after GUI installed, so that's one I can definitely install because we do have a GUI. Is it just called FDEF then? Lib FDEF. Um, If you open the no chunks one, it, you can search the whole of the book. So, for example, the Python modules, the names aren't in the index. So there's no way of searching them through the index. So it's quite useful to have the, yeah, there it is, under Xorg input drivers. Uh, okay, why have I got lib rebuild after GUI installed? I don't understand that. Or well, maybe it was required by something before the GUI, but now we've built the GUI, it would have been brought in anyway. Uh, let's see if we've got these. Yeah, we have got these tools, so. Um, I'm happy not to install that again because it means, uh, well, it would have meant that we would have had to install that anyway. So that, as far as I'm concerned, is complete. I'll just mark that off as done.
Okay, so that's it for all the rebuilds for now. There's still a lot to do due to a sort of common core of packages. Um, so we can go back to uh, setting our sights on installing Falcon. Now, uh, some of the tests I did with this, I was going to just install the basic packages, um, but I found I was having problems with it. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to go through and build as much as I can to get Falcon working, which is not what I wanted. I wanted to try and get into the environment as soon as possible. So you may see some packages have already been downloaded. Um, some are downloaded anyway, like the Qt and Qt Web Engine, because they're quite big downloads, so just save a bit of time. Uh, but yeah, you might might see packages I've already downloaded. I'm not downloading them, but that's only, like I said, because I was doing some testing. Uh, so don't be too concerned about that. And also, it's the reason why these links have been clicked on because I've been looking around uh, to see what what I can do and what I can get away with. Okay, so let's start with the building of Falcon. And first thing we've got is a few dependencies. All these three dependencies need to be installed. So we've got CMake and we've got Sphinx, so this should be a straightforward installation. So I think I've already got this one yet. So extract it, change into the directory, and there's no exceptional options or command explanations, so we can just copy and paste all of this and that's done um, so this is part of the KD frameworks this package um, but it's installed into user because it's used by some non KD frameworks package packages so let's just install it and that's done So it's extra CMake modules. Let's stick that one into the build list. Okay. So back to Falcon. Next thing we've got to do is KDE Frameworks. So KDE Frameworks is a collection of libraries based on top of Qt5 and QML derived from the monolithic KDE4 libraries that can be used independent of the KDE display environment, Plasma 5. So Plasma 5 is the actual desktop environment. These are needed by Plasma 5, but they um, can exist on their own for other packages, such as what we're doing now is building Falcon. So there's quite a few dependencies here, which I'm going to go through and install. Um, so let's start with, or boost, I think we should have, I don't know what the executable for that is called. I'm pretty sure we've installed that. Oh, they're all libraries. Oh, installed directory. Let's have a look and see if that directory exists. Yes, it does. So we have installed that. We've just installed that. I know we've got that. That Giflib we haven't got by the looks of it. Let's see if we've got. No, let's do Giflib next then. So this is straightforward. So XMLTO is required, which we've got installed already. So we should be able to just run make. That's completed. There's no test suite. So we'll become root and put these commands in to install it. And that's giflib done. OK, 
Okay, get rid of that and tidy up. So next we've got Libby Poxy we've done. Yep. Lib G Crypt. Yep. Lib iCal. I'm just assuming we've installed these, the fact that they're downloaded. They look familiar. The links uh, have changed colour, which is not totally reliable, but it's a good indication. Lib PNG, I'm sure we've done. Lib XSLT, we've definitely done. LMDB, let's do that one next. So that hasn't got any dependencies. LMDB. Some capitals. And then the directories in lowercase. So again, there's no explanations uh, for any options or anything. So we just build it, no test suite, install, and that's done. Next we've got QCA. So that's got a load of dependencies, but I'm pretty sure we've got all of these, the looks of it. Let's see, make right, we haven't got QT. That's interesting, it needs that. So it looks like we might have to install QT now. Uh, is this, yeah, it's a requirement. So there's a circular dependency there. Let's see if there's any mention of it. No, there isn't. Let's have a look at what dependencies we've got for QT. We've got a lot installed. Uh, yeah, QT Web Engine will need QT, won't it? Yeah. Uh, well, we've got the requirement. Um, I think we're going to have to install a lot of these. Um, QCA has been installed and you're reinstalling and updating this package and QCA will need to be reinstalled. So that indicates that QCA has got to come after QT anyway. So I think I might be tempted not to install that at the moment. But I'll have to make a note that QCA has to be rebuilt after QT. So rebuild QCA after QT. Uh, but it is a requirement, so I wonder what's going to break if we don't put that in. Um, right, I think what I'll do is I'll fetch it and see how badly it breaks. So 
So there's nothing to tell it to ignore the fact that Qt is not installed, but it might be intelligent enough that it will go ahead and build with, no, it can't find, okay. So it definitely needs Qt. Okay. In that case, I'll have to start building the dependencies for Qt now. Um, install it without, did it need QCA? Doesn't look like it. It just says to build QCA after Qt. Okay, so the first thing we'll have to do is else lib. Um, despite the fact that the color has changed, it isn't installed. We've got e login D. So let's put that next in the list to compile. Also lib, I've got all the dependencies. Uh, device drivers, that should be set. Let's do a secat proc config grep sound. So that's set. You can see there it is there, and SND, and again that's, oh, it's just SND on its own, yes that's set, and also um, have to set the appropriate hardware, I'm not really looked into that too much, but generally the defaults should work, um, there might be some tweaking if you've got an unusual sound chip but generally the intel ones work as they are and that's something you can go back and fix later if you find the sounds not working when the desktop comes up so that's configured it's building it i'm not going to build the api documentation so i'll skip that run some checks that's all passed sudo minus e and make install. And some information about config file, uh, files and also location to assist with that configuration. So that's else lib. We've got make CA. Uh, I thought we had cups. Is that not installed yet? Uh, cups. No, it isn't. Okay. Now cups could be quite a big installation, so we may have to either skip some stuff or uh, do it all now. So we've got GNU TLS, Color D, DOS GLib, little CMS. 2.14 we've got these two so we can install this next so we're starting to get into the realms of the graphics multimedia type things which was bound to happen at some point but we're getting to the position where we're going to have to do it anyway so it's probably Best not to avoid it anymore. So let's do this said. And there's no other options. So I'll just configure and make.
Make a check. And we can install it. And that's done. What else have we got? E-login D, we're done, we've done that. So libg USB needs JSON glib. So it looks like we're in a position to install that one. Okay, so we don't want the API documentation, so we need to add that in. So let's create the build directory, copy the meson command, and add in this GTK doc disabled. Even though we've got GTK doc, I don't. Oh, manual pages. I wonder if we can add in, add in minus D man equals enabled there. Would you configured? So I need to add in reconfigure. So that's got to be true. Okay, that seems to have worked. So let's see if it does work all the way. The build worked. Okay, well, it does seem to have installed some documents. So let's see if we can do man. Yep, it has worked, so I'm not sure why I haven't specified that. Maybe there's some other problem. Hopefully it's not too serious with installing the man pages. So that's JSON glib. Um, so now we've got the next one is USB utils required for the test. Useful to have anyway. This is what gives us, gives us LS USB. We've already got libusb, um, wget we've already installed right at the very beginning. I don't think there's any rebuild option for it, is there? Um, actually, it probably is one that we need to... Oh no, it isn't. No, we have installed that, that's right. Since we installed it right at the very beginning. I'll just open that to change the color of the link. But if you see, we've got, oh, it's just one test. Uh, I guess we could install that and run the full set of tests just to prove a point. But to be quite honest, it's not absolutely necessary. Uh, sorry. Let's this, paste it in, copy that, paste that, extract it, so just build it with usual standard Perl commands. So I've got an error there. Three out of tests, three out of five tests have failed. But it is giving us lots of warnings about. Oh yes, I've missed that, the dependency there. Right. So we need 
to do message first. Okay, we've got loads here. So clone first of all. And B cow. So standard build. That's better. That one's going. And so do minus C making stall. That's that one. Now we can do clone. Again, usual Perl build instructions and then make install. Encode locale next. So that one's on its own. Cal build and install it. HTTP date needs time date. So time date. Since uh, built, so let's install it and that's done. Now we can do HTTP date. Same build and testing instructions, all passed as usual, and install. Now IO HTML. So build and test and install. That's that one. LWP media types. Test fatal we've got, so we can install this and install it. Okay, 
now we should be in a position to install HTTP message. Build it and install it. That's HTTP TTP message done. Now our HTTP daemon module should work. shouldn't see any warnings. Oh, we are seeing warnings still. Okay. But I'd expect the test to pass, which it looks like they're behaving a lot better now. Yes, there's a pass, so that's good. And install it. So that's that module, HTTP daemon, we've got IO socket, libidn2, libpsl, got both PCREs, so now we can do wget again. So I'm not use Valgrin because we haven't got that, so we're just going to copy and paste and build this. Okay, run some tests. And that all looked good from what I could see. Still a few skips, but they might be the Valgrind tests. Uh, but the main point is that everything rung there. We've got a full dependency that's listed in the book, so it's the best we can do. So make install, and that's wget reinstalled. So let's put that in. So I'm just marking that as done. And we can carry on with USB utils. Uh, caught out again. So, is there any other optional commands? No. So, we'll just copy this all in. And install. And then also as the root user, install a data file that has all the IDs, all the hardware IDs of the USB devices. Um, it mentions there's a Python script that displays the information more easily. 
and the LSUSB, LSUSB, um, you can see it's uh, displaying it in a slightly different way. In fact, this gives the current usage and the connected speed, so it is quite a, a nicer display, even if it does wrap around. So that's that. Um, So that's just repeating the command we've just run to fetch the latest updates, but also it's got a cron script here that we can add to get updates every week. So that's worth putting in. So that just gets updated automatically in the background without us even knowing about it. So that's USB utils done. I say quite a handy tool to have anyway on any, any machine. Uh, especially USB, it could be anything you get plugged into the machine you might want to interrogate. So let's get rid of that. Now we've got libgusb. So we've got everything else. Uh, the only extra option we've got here is allows you building package out. If you have that installed, you wish to build. So this option. Okay, so it looks like we'll keep that as doxic or false because don't want the API documentation. Okay, so ninja test. That's a pass. So sudo one C. Ninja install and that's complete. So next we've got GNOME Desktop, let's see what that entails, lots, and I believe these two entail lots of dependencies as well, so it might be the time that we're going to have to start looking at installing these, um, which is a bit unfortunate, but it's got to be done at some time. So I think it's time to bite the bullet and get into these. Name desktop. G settings desktop schemes. Looks like we've got that one. We certainly have. At least we've downloaded it. Let's have a look on the spreadsheet. Yep, that is in there. the others I recognize. So it's just these two GTK um, packages and ISO codes and there's a slight chance that ISO codes might be pulled in by one of these two. Very slight chance. But let's deep, go deeper into one of these. So we need this add waiter icon theme. And optional, it says GTK2 or 3, which I think we've got GTK2 and it needs a rebuild. Um, GTK plus dash 2. Okay, we've got GTK needs to be built after cups and 
gnome themes extra.org so I won't build that now as it's still got some dependencies So what I will do, oh, and it's got Inkscape here as well. Let's see what that entails. So we could have a go at building that possibly. Uh, yeah, let's do it while we're here. So we need something called double conversion. And once again, we're picking up other tools that are probably going to be used anyway. So it doesn't really matter that we're doing this now. So double conversion. Share libs on testing on. There's no extra options unless you want to turn those off for some reason. That's built. Run the tests. And we can install it. So that's that one. Next we've got GSL. This one looks vaguely familiar. Is this something we were waiting for? No, I haven't touched that at all. Okay. Sphinx RTD theme needs this one. So this is a Python module. So we've got PY test, so that's okay. Let's run, install it, and that's done. Uh, tidy that up. Now we can do. Sphinx RTD theme 1.2.2 So fix wrong versions for dependencies. Build the module. Install it. And run the test with these commands. 3 pass with 18 warnings. So that's Sphinx RTD theme. Now we can do GSL. So there's no extra options. Let's 
build it. And we can install some HTML or build some HTML documentation. And run some tests. Right, it looks like rather than collecting all those tests together into groups, it's going to be mostly run individually, but there's no errors at the end here, so we know all the tests that ran past. So we can install that package now and also install the software, the, yeah, sorry, documentation. So that's GSL. Next we've got GTKMM, which needs GTK3, which is what we're building. And recommended. Oh, we're doing this Adwaita one, aren't we? So that might be a case of reinstalling Adwaiter actually. As we haven't got GTK installed yet. Um, these are only rec well, say only recommended. We could try to install GTK3 now. Um, in fact, we should be doing that because it's ahead of the list in Inks in before Inkscape. So I've gone a little bit awry there. Oh, the, there it is. There. Oh, I see. Yes, because Adwaiter is a dependency of GTK3. And GTK3 needs Adwaiter as a dependency. So I think I'll try and install this now, see how it goes, because it looks like we've got to reinstall it anyway. Um, so let's fetch this. So GTK plus dash three. So I'll 
put this in block so I think there might be some more uh, possibly some more dependencies to put in before this will actually go but we can always try it so let's see what we've got build a temporary directory for building copy the configure command effectively let's see what we've got pull by back end html5 gtk back end generate main pages gtk doc building documentation is that the api it doesn't say it's api so we can put that in and tracker 3 it requires tracker 3 to be installed which is an optional so that's something we can add in at a later date when, when we reinstall this so let's try that XB, xkb common not found so it says our thoughts yeah it needs another dependency there so let's put that one in next that hasn't got any dependencies so let's leave that there as it is insert this one above gtk i have to copy that again Docs, all right, so that's okay. We haven't got docs, gent, so we'll just copy and paste this. Run the tests, that looks all good. And ninja install, and that's done. So back to GTK3. So let's try running this meson setup again. Let's check we've got the right uh, meson configuration. Double check. No, it's not. So I need to go back one more. Is it that one? Yeah, Broadway backend is true. Yeah, it's on its own, that meson command. So that's the one we want. So yes, that's worked now. And you can see CUPS has been disabled because we haven't installed that yet. Um, even though it doesn't mention it's uh, depends. Oh yes, it is there. So that's something that will need to be installed. Okay, so now let's build it. Okay, that's built. Um, it says you need a graphical session to run the tests. Um, well, I might just run them off screen. Assuming they're not going to take too long to run. Um, but otherwise, I've put the note. So you won't be able to see this, unfortunately. Um... So if I type star text, change to sources BLFS, GTK plus dash three, forward slash build. So D bus run session ninja test. 
honest. Okay, so something's ha oh, it's, yes, I see why it's it's trying to put windows to the screen. Yeah, it's displaying windows on the screen. So that's why it's got to be a graphical session. Looks like it might take a couple of minutes. So yeah, what I've done is I've put a note in that it needs to be reinstalled after the dependencies anyway, and um, running the um, tests again on the video, you'll be able to see them anyway. Uh, actually, it's nipping through quite quickly with a few clips. Her clicks. So there's four tests that have failed, um, but bearing in mind that we haven't got all the dependencies in, that's four out of 109, uh, 194. So that's 190 that have passed. So that's that's adequate for me. So I'll come back to this screen now and just run Ninja install. Uh, if you've installed it using desktop method, we haven't. Some config files. Okay, I might do that one to rebuild this. Uh, as part of GTK3 to redesign the scroll bar buttons are no longer visible in scroll bar in many applications. Okay, I think I'll change that. Uh, this is still installing. I can hear the fan on the machine, so it is doing something. Okay, that's done. I'll just do this little change. Uh, and apart from that, I think that's good for now. So that allows us now to install GTK MM, but this also needs ATK MM, which needs GLib MM, it needs lib 6 c docbook XML5. Now we'd have installed a docbook, but don't think it was that version. Yeah, we installed XML 4.5. So we do need to install that version. Probably for documentation we might not build, but it's here, it won't take long. So let's copy that. Right now, it doesn't mention that it unzips to uh, without a containing directory, but having been bitten more than once before, there's a slight chance they may have forgotten to mention that in the book. Unlikely, but possible. Um, and because I'm not sure what it would do, I'm not going to take a chance. So, doc book five. Oh, it has, that's good. Yeah, so that's why it's not mentioned. So as the root user, we in 
install these and then create or update the appropriate catalogs. Create individual catalogs. Create or update and populate the system XML catalog. And that's it. So that's docbook 5.0. There's nothing else to be done, so we can do this lib 6 C++. C++. Don't want the API documentation, so I'm not going to add that in. So all we need to do is to copy and paste the commands that are in the book. That's done. Run some tests, and that's complete. So we can now do ninja install, and that's all done. to glib mm there's nothing else to be installed here so let's do this one Again, it's just a case of copying and pasting the commands in the book. Run the tests, all good. So now let's install and that's done. So back to 80k mm and we're ready to install this one now. And again, just copy and paste these commands. There's no other options mentioned. There's no test suite. So we just install it. Back to GTK MM, we need Pango MM. That needs libcairo MM. And we've got everything there. So copy and extract so build test is true, boost shared is true. The switch builds the HTML document. Okay, so we haven't got doc oxygen so we'll skip that run the tests all good and install and it's done so pango mm No 
extra options here mentioned. There's no tests, so we'll install. And back to GTKMM, we're in a position to build this now. Was true if you've got doxygen, we haven't, so we'll copy this as it is. Right again, it says it's got to be in a graphical environment, so um, I'll run these off screen. Okay, that's done. I'm running the test now. And oh, I've done gone into the wrong directory. They've got a different name because obviously build directory is in use. So GTKMM build and ninja test. No, it's still not working. That's interesting. GTK MM three dot two four dot eight GTK MM. I wonder why that is. Let's try it here. Oh, that's failing. So why isn't it working on this screen? Let's double check the directories gtk mm forward slash gtk mm three slash build and the command is ninja test. No, if I can spell it right. Oh, now it started. Okay. Oh, all it did is ran two, two tests in uh, less than a second actually. So that's not very eventful. It does say test tried to open the windows, didn't see anything, but the tests were so quick anyway. Um, there's no failures or anything, it just says two, two are okay of two. So that was a bit of a letdown. I thought it was going to be a bit like the GTK one. Okay, so what I'll do now is to install the package. And if you've built the documentation, which we didn't, so that's the end of that one. Back to Inkscape, uh, LibSoup next for the looks of it. This needs PHP and Samba, so I think I'm going to go into these now to start building these bigger packages. That needs a spell. So we can do that one next. It says we'll need at least one dictionary. Let's see what dictionaries there are here. So there's a good selection here. So it's got under EN. So it looks like it's only English. So I presume it's only going to be American English. Let's copy that and paste it in as well then. Okay. A spell dash O six O so 
so there's no other command explanations so let's configure and build Come the root, install the package. If you do not plan to install LS spell, then copy the wrapper script I spell. Well, if it's just a wrapper script, I presume it will be overwritten, so I'm going to install these. And if we do install those other packages, then um, I'm hoping they would overwrite them. configuration you must set up at least one dictionary and install the English dictionary by running the following commands so you'd have to adapt this obviously um, with whichever dictionary I've actually done that as an unprivileged user but never mind it's done now so I'll come out of this and I imagine this is going to fail now because I was root yes that's better so back to PHP, we need enchant. Let's debus glib. Yeah, we've got all these dependencies, so that's good. As you can see, like these dependencies, we keep picking up, and it's not a waste of time doing the most of them because they're just shared libraries that are used by other packages. So, um, as I said before. If you're in doubt about something, build it because uh, it's a lot less great trying to tra chase down something that doesn't work because you haven't installed something you're unsure about rather than then installing it and getting something work or at worst installing something that's never used um, unless you can be certain that it's something you don't need. Uh, so dbus glib Copy link address. So just the extra switch to enable API documentation to be built. I'm not going to do that as usual. So to test the results, issue make check. Note that the more comprehensive test can be run by following the same method used in the dbus instructions, which requires building the package twice. Oh, I don't think I'll be doing that then. Uh, okay, so that didn't run. There's one that ran there, one there. So yeah, it's not very comprehensive, but it looks all good. So let's to make install let's remove that we've got everything for enchants now paste that one in Nothing to alter here, build it. It does say you need to enable this option and ensure that unit test CPP is installed to run the test, but as always, I'm going to run it see what happens and okay it's virtually failed at the build stage building the test so it definitely needs that other option so i'm just going to make install um 
There's configuration files. You can test your installation and configuration by testing the test file and running the following commands. You can replace the ENGB dictionary by any other downloaded when installing a spell. So let's run that first of all, and then run these two. Yeah, but it seems we've done this run each one at a time. Let's see the output of each one. Yep, yeah, so it's identified a bot is spelt wrong. It doesn't know what Linux is. There are in commands. So that bit's worked. And that one's come up with suggestions by the looks of it. Oh, I see. So Linux, it's saying it needs to be capitalized with the looks of it. There's the suggestion there, so it's quite handy. So yeah, that does seem to be working, which as you've seen also proves that A spell is working correctly as well. So what else we've got here? We've got all these. These are outside of the book. Optional graphics, utilities and libraries. So lib exif. Doxygen, this needs gra graphics to build the documentation. Okay, so I'll probably just rebuild this to build documentation. It's gone. Rebuild after graphics. Apart from that, we can build it now. There's no other options here, so we can just copy and paste. And do some checks. That looks all okay. And install it. So now we've got an optional tidy HTML5. Copy link address. Okay, what have we got here? Temp space. Okay, that's included. So we just copy and paste this. No test suite, so let's become the root and install. And that's done. Back again. Optional data management utilities and libraries. And lib IO DVC. Okay, this is straightforward enough. So I think this looks like we can just copy and paste this. These settings are just recommended settings for the looks of it to avoid problems.
So there's no test to run. So we'll just install and that's done. Uh, so once again, we've got PostgreSQL. Like I said, I don't really bother installing this other. Um, we've probably got nearly all of these dependencies anyway, apart from just FOPs. So, and it's about running a server, so I just don't really see the point in that. Um, it's fairly straightforward to follow if you do need it. Same with uh, Kerberos. So I'll just go ahead and install PHP now. So let's fetch the package, pre-built documentation, and there's chunked documentation, and there's other languages at that link there. So let's get both of these. I don't know if they're both needed or if it's going to tell us how to install one or the other. Let's extract it. So install with this command. Let's check. There's no doubt going to be some explanations for this. FPM, fast process manager without pair. There's config. Zlib, DC Mass, BZ2, Calendar, DBA Shared with FTP, Get Text, MB String, with Read Line, Disable Living XML. Okay, so we don't need to add that because we've got that installed. Instead of building files, put a batching module. Okay, so we'll leave that out. MySQLI, include option for MySQLI support. Don't think we've got that. MySQLI sock. So I think I'll leave these options because I'm not really sure what these do. So I'll just accept the defaults. Uh, how long does this take one off? Oh, it's not too bad. A few minutes. Okay, so let's build it and wait for it to finish. Okay, that's done. So, can run the test.
it says that several tests may fail, in which case you ask whether you want to send the report to PHP developers. So I assume it's that means it's asking you during the test. So it does suggest that you use the yes command to send a no to the input of make test so it doesn't hang waiting for a response. So run the command like that uh, to ensure that it gets through. Um, and we'll see. Well, that's strange because it says 16,000, but there's only 14,000 there. So whether there's another set of tests that run afterwards, don't know, but we'll see what happens at the end of this.
Okay, so that's finished. We did have some failures. Um, there's only three that failed. Um, it does say some, several tests, so to me that's a few. Uh, so I think that's good. Um, about 25% was skipped, but I did notice one of them was to do with Windows, so that's nothing to worry about in particular. So I think the thing to do now is um, install this. So sudo minus su. Copy and paste this. That's done. We need to do this to uh, rename some files on the first installation. Pre-built documentation is packaged in two forms, a table containing many individual files and one large file. So you can install either or both of them or neither, of course, so there's any option you wish to take. So let's do that first one. And the second one, the bundle pair is not installed because of bug, which might pollute the file system with several hidden files and directories. If pair is needed, execute. Well, that sounds like a nasty thing to have. So I'll skip that. Uh, you may have noticed following up from the make install command. No, I didn't. Let's see if we can go back and have a look. This might be some way back now, all these files here. Okay, this is going quite a way back, isn't it? There it is. End of the testing. So installing. You may want to add, it says. No, I can't see that at all. Okay, so. Let's do this anyway. And it says you can add some modules for the HTTP server. Those modules accept the proxy class directors. One possibly is as a root user to run this. Um, this may be desirable. So, um, do I want to run the PHP? I suppose we could do. Um, it's not something we'd be using on a desktop normally, but it's there. Um, so go back to the BLFS directory and make install PHP. I guess we can remove them if they become a problem. And we can rest, uh, start PHP FPM as well. That seems to have started fine. So let's tidy that up. That's PHP installed. Uh, all we've got left here now is to install Samba. And NTLM auth is required to run the test suite, which we haven't got, I'm not sure. See what it says in there. So we've got some dependencies here to resolve. So we've got these. Let's do JSON 
410 which is a Perl module so let's copy that link okay so build and test and install okay next we need pass yap looks like another per module it is same instructions as before and install it RPC SVC proto Proto configure and make and install that's that one done GPGME these graph is for documentation and QT as well see list we can do now possibly let's have a nosy at that one so I think we've got those two um so this is where is this GPGME recommended? So it does recommend this. So what I think I'll do is install C Lisp and then put a note to reinstall after the other oops, after the other packages have been installed. All oh, right, okay, we need lib sig sev seg b. So let's copy that link. Catch it. Oops. So we just install this as it states and build it all past. So we'll install, that's all okay. Now we can do C Lisp. Oh, and there's a patch here as well, missed that. So there's a exceptional case there on a 32-bit system. If you're on 64-bit and you're worried about it, you can put that in. It won't do anything. Um, 
but to be sure you can put it in. Remove two tests that fail. Run in the patch. And then install with these options here. Okay, so we don't need to change anything there. It says it won't uh, build well with parallel build, so we'll have to watch it build on one thread. Okay, it's built. Let's run some tests. That's all okay with the looks of it. Yep, zero errors. So let's now install. The file exists. That's interesting. Oh, that's very interesting. Oh, I hope it's nothing to do with this patch. I just realized it says you're building against libff call, which we're not. Uh, right, I might have to rebuild this then. Uh, right, let's do this again. So, I'll not have to clear the whole lot one time. See this. So I'll have to do this set again, skip the patch, put all this in.
Right, okay, so now I run the tests. Okay, so we've got zero errors again. Let's try the install. No, it's still failing, so I'm not sure why that is. And I'm not actually sure where it's trying to create this file either. It's a static file, so maybe something we can ignore. Oh, very static library and use a lib. Well, that's interesting. It's not even creating that directory they've mentioned here. Driver hasn't even got that far. Uh, let's try minus K. Right, we've got all the dependencies. LibNSL, that, that is definitely installed, I'm pretty sure of it. NSL. Yeah, that's installed. There's no notes next to it to rebuild it. It was installed quite early on. I uh, guess we can have a look at that. LibTurpc is definitely installed. Lib Kerberos, I can't imagine that would be the problem. If it would, there'd be a mention of it. Uh, oh, that's the point. I wonder if the install is trying to be installed in parallel. Make minus J1. Let's try that. Yes, that's what it is. Okay. That's interesting. That needs to be added to the book, really. Um, yeah, that was very strange. Okay. So that is CLISP done. And I'll check that directory now. I mean, obviously the install worked correctly, but this should be here now. And it is. And you can see those files it was trying to do. So I presume the thread that was or copying or creating the link to these files was running before the thread that created the directory was made. Uh, or run, so that's probably what the problem was. And we should have these two files C Lisp, yeah, and C Lisp link. So, yes, that's definitely all okay now. Uh, right, so we've got to install GPGME now with a note to reinstall it after um, graph this and QT. So GNU PG, if it's not installed, and it is, we can leave that out. Okay. So we'll just 
paste that in. Oh, so sorry, I've misread that. It says it's not required if GNU PG is installed. So let's start from scratch. Rerun that, but removing that command, that option. Okay, that's done. Let's run some tests. It says that one's known to fail. Okay, uh, that looked like that uh, passed all completely, 56 of 56, so I'll just go for the install now. And that's complete for this time. So back to Samba. Looks like we need a far here next. Oops. Oh, do I keep on doing the wrong option? Open a new tab. So this also needs to be rebuilt after QT at least. And we've got these two here, so they should be okay. So rebuild after QT. What else? Probably just that one by the looks of it. So let's now install the other options we've got here, uh, dependencies. So we've got GTK 2 and 3 installed. Let's go to libdaemon. So that looks like that's ready to go. So configure and make other options. There's no tests, so we'll go straight to the install. And we didn't build the documentation, so that's that package finished. Libglade. Looks like we've got all the 
options for this package. So there's just one option to enable GTK Doc if you want the API, which we don't. And make check, apparently one test is known to fail. So in our case it hasn't, so that's okay. Install it and that's that package done. Uh, next, we've got PYGTK requires PYGobject requires PYCairo and an optional one for tests. So PYCairo. Okay, there's two versions of PY Cairo, and this is an earlier version we're installing. That's interesting. Uh, we're doing 18. So this is a Python 2, is it? Oh, yes, yeah, so it is. So this should work because we've already installed Python 2. Uh, um, install it. And that's done. So now we can build PY object. Okay, we've got two versions of this as well. These are all versions because I presume that's why we had to use Python 2. Yeah, Python 2 is mentioned there again. So build it and Install it. And now PYGTK version two as well. No other optional dependencies, or rather, sorry, dependencies that are part of the BLFS book that we haven't installed already. So I'll fetch this. Adapt the package, configure and build it. So it says the test must be run from active X display. So let's get the terminal up, which again, you can't see. PYGTK. And just wait for that to finish before I run make check. Hopefully it won't take too long. It shouldn't do. Okay, so that's started. Um, All right, it started and then it's failed with an error. I'm not sure why. Uh, let's try. 
destroy and ld config. That is still failing. Failing. It says attempting to freeze the notification queue for the object. GTK settings. So I'm not sure why that's failing. Um, Bing's is a Python two module, and uh, there's no real explanation here about it. I'm just going to install the package. Um, oh, we could have rebuilt the documentation there, the looks of it. Uh, let's do that. PYGTK, so I'll rebuild this. Add that in and then enable docs. So that looks all okay. I'll see what error I get on the screen here. It might be slightly different things. It won't be able to access the X display, but I'm not even sure if it got that far. It was failing quite quickly. Yeah, that's the error I'm getting on the screen. So it's nothing to do with the fact that it's uh, a problem with the X. Oh, no, no, actually, actually, sorry, it's not the same. It's saying it can't open display. So it's failing earlier. Let me try it again. So I'll have to go back to the parent directory and go back down again because this will be a different inode, this directory. And run, make, check. Yep, it's still failing in the same way about GTK settings. So whether it's because GTK is still not properly installed, that's a possibility as it's going to be reinstalled. Um, I don't know. But I'll do the make install for now. There's the documentation, but it looks like possibly I just saw. Yep. So that's done. Um, I'll put the tests failed. Maybe needs rebuild after which GTK would it be? GTK2. GTK plus dash two. Uh, I'll put that against the right line. So that was PYGTK2, back to Vahi. It looks like that is ready to go now. So let's do that next. Download it. Extract it. Yeah. So we need to, as the root, create a group and a user for the Avahi daemon. There should also be a dedicated privilege access group for. A of our clients, so we had that. Now we can patch, fix the security vulnerability, and run the install with this command. We'll start the configure. Let's just double check the options that are here.
so we'll GTK three. Right, so we need to add that in because it will fail otherwise. And next time, obviously we'll leave that bit off. Enable tests. Do they run the test? Does not come with a test suite. All right, so we'll leave that. So if his compatibility layer, I think I used to enable this one, but if they're compatibility layers, they're probably for something a lot older, so I won't install those. I'll just configure it like that. And run the build. So it definitely must be built after QT then, because there's an option there to disable it is uh, something you probably want. Make install. And then as the root user, we go to the BLFS scripts, boot scripts and do make install of Vahi. And we can even start it. It looks like that's okay. Tidy that up and back to Samba. Samba bind, probably don't need that. That's for name serving. So I'll skip that. Libcap with Pam. Right, so the Libcap package is installed in LFS, but if Lib Linux Pam support is desired, the Pam module must be built. Okay, so that's probably a good idea to install this. Let's grab it again. So I felt upgrading from a previous version um, using instructions on the LFS LiveCap page to upgrade. If Linux PAM has been built, PAM module will automatically be built too. So we're not upgrading because this should be the same version as in Linux from scratch. Install as the root user. Paste those two commands in. Configuring libpack cap. Just copy these commands. Additionally, we we'll need to modify the etc security capability comp files grant necessary privileges to users to utilize the set cap utility to set capabilities on specific utilities as needed. Man, let's have a look at this first. So some information there about whether, uh, how to do that, whether we need that or not, I don't know. But I imagine if there was something important to do there, it would be in the book. So that's that package. Uh, Taloc, it says, is included, and yet it's got a separate page for that. So I guess we could add this in. It could be used by something else, XFS progs. We can build this. So any H. So 
So again, no extra commands, we'll just build this, no tests. We'll do a ninja install and that's that package. Lib Urku. Let's copy that link. So this is straightforward again, just copy and paste the instructions there. Run some checks, all okay, no errors. And make install. So back to XFS progs. Right, just notice this kernel configuration. Yeah, that makes sense to enable XFS support in the kernel. So I need to go to file systems and enable XFS here. So this obviously entails a rebuild. Okay, now we'll mount, oh, in fact, I've got my script of nice, so let's just run install. That's done. I'll come out of this and this. Log in as the root and I'll do a, a reboot and log out and wait for the machine to come back up again. So it's rebooting now. Okay, here it comes. This is good because this will test some of the additional packages we've added, such as the Avahi Daemon and PHP. They're all coming up okay. There's no errors on startup, so that's good. So I'll log back in here. And we'll carry on. And oh, one thing I will do is just double check that that setting has come up, that the right kernel has been loaded. Um, grep for xfs underscore fs. And yeah, there it is, it's set. So that's good. So now we can build this package. And become the root. To install it. And that's done.
So now we can install Taloc. So straightforward build. Okay, and we can do some checks. So that looks like that was a pass. So let's install. It's done. Back to Samba. And that looks like there's nothing else to install. So let's put Samba in as the next package to build and fetch it. Okay, so let's extract that. Support the test suite. Let's set up Python for a virtual environment. For some Python modules out the outside the scope of BLFS. So looks like we download these Python modules. Uh, and then we need to run this to configure build so we've got anything worth looking at here enable FHS and system they shared modules That ADDC, okay, they've added that in with self test prefix. Okay, so yeah, it looks like the defaults are adequate. Okay, so now let's run the build and wait for it to finish.
Okay, so that's built. Uh, we can run the tests with this command here. So it's failed already. Couldn't find the module talloc, even though we've, used, we've installed it. So let's do an early config. Rerun, that's better. No, it's still failing. Oh, how strange, we haven't got that. And yet it's been installed. Yep, there it is there. So why isn't that working? VMV. Let's try make a test on its own as it suggests there for the complete test now that's failing as well what's your not found error uh, enable self test I oh, can't explain that. Uh, it's built okay. Let's run make again. Yeah, there's nothing done there at all. I think it was PWD, PYV, MV, bin, path, make quick test. And we've got as far as I can tell, I've got everything that's installed here. can't explain that so I'm gonna just have to install it without the test running um, like I said I don't know why that's failed or what's happened let's just recall the configure command again make sure that looks okay Python's PWD Path configure Yep, I don't know. Uh, so I'll just attempt to install it. 
So sudo su minus e, sorry, minus e su. So fix a hard coded path. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, I see that. So this should be it's the ordinary user, and then sudo minus e su. Plug that in, and then all of these to install the package. Okay, so that's done. I'm not going to set it up as a print, uh, sorry, as a server, but might want to do this to use a printer that's on the Samba network. Um, it's got a couple of scenarios there for how you might want to install it. As I was not using it as a server, I'm not going to set it up at all. So that, apart from the test, I don't know what happened there. Uh, that should be installed okay so now should be able to install libsoup So we've got some options here. So it looks like we can enable some documentation to be built. So DV API disabled. Use this if you're not installed Valor because you're not building GNOME. Right, we are, well, we have got Valor and the probably will be building GNOME. Users option to enable documentation to be built. GSS API disabled. So we haven't got Kerberos installed, so we must add this. Oh, sorry, it's already in there. Okay, that's all right. And sysprof disabled. Right, we've got sysprof, so we can remove that option. doc enabled so it doesn't like that so is it called documentation no docs maybe um Is it that one there tells you what the options are? If you examine it, yeah. So let's look for doc. Right, looks like it's GTK doc that should be. I'm sure I've come across this problem before, so it's obviously not been fixed. So that should read GTK underscore docs. Uh, it should be true or false. I always find this funny with this. It's you disable things, but you have to specify true for other things. I'm not quite sure how that works. There's obviously going to be some logic to it, but um, I don't know what that is. So that looks like that's worked. GSS API is disabled, so that's good. So now let's run Ninja. Run Ninja test. Let's do an SSL test. There's a failure there, so I'm not sure why that is. Oh, it does say it's, it does fail, so that's taken care of. Uh, 
Okay, so just the one failure, which we don't need to worry about because it's accounted for. So let's install. And this looks like it's an older version of LibSoup because there's a LibSoup 3, so it could be we need to install the newer version as well at some point. Inkscape, so next we need Poplar. Open JPEG. Okay, so this is the one to do next. So it looks like there's nothing to modify here. the root to install it and that's done. So back to Poplar. So this needs to be installed again after QT looks of it required for PDF support in Ocular. So I better make a note of that. Rebuild after QT. So we've got some options to set here possibly, or we'll change. Let's see what we've got. Release, test data, duh. And everyone stay with API. That's API, enable boost off. If not installed, it's right. So we have got boost. So we'll leave them as they are. Let's just see what those. All oh, right, so it's complaining that it couldn't find QT. And it's confirmed that there as well. So that does show that it does need to be reinstalled for that functionality. Okay, to test, we need to put this command in to fetch some files. And then we need to run this command to run the tests. And that's a complete success. Install the packages, install some documentation. Downloaded the additional encoding data package. I missed that. Yes, I did. So let's fetch that. So that should be in. BLFS directory, so just to be sure, I'm going to just list that and it is there. So now I can become root again to install that data file. And 
and that's that package finished. Uh, no, not that one. Two. And that's done. Right, I think I'm going to take a break now um, and carry on in the next video with uh, installing the dependencies for Inkscape.